Since the beginning of photography, there have been three basic elements to be considered when taking a photo. Shutter speed, the amount of time the imaging plane is exposed to light. Aperture, the physical opening in a lens controlling how much light falls into the camera. And ISO, the amount that light is amplified to either brighten or darken an image. Together, these three elements make up what photographers call the exposure triangle. Popularized as a quick and easy way to familiarize oneself with camera settings, the traditional exposure triangle we know is actually a misrepresentation of how digital cameras really work. Let's explore why the exposure triangle that you have probably seen and learned is wrong, and let's think of some ways we can fix it. This is Redesigning the Exposure Triangle. First, let's define exposure. Exposure is strictly defined as the light per unit area reaching the sensor, and it is determined by scene luminance, aperture size, and shutter speed. Did you notice that I didn't say ISO? This is the problem with the exposure triangle. ISO does not actually affect the true exposure of an image. In-camera ISO only amplifies a signal from the sensor meaning that increasing ISO on your camera merely brightens the data already recorded by the image sensor. Increased grain associated with higher ISOs is a result from less light reaching the sensor, whether it be from the reciprocal change in aperture size and shutter speed caused by raising the ISO and maintaining proper brightness, or because of reduction in scene luminance. This is why you may see more noise and grain in the shadow regions of photos instead of the highlight areas. The shadow areas of the photo are physically receiving less light than others, so when you try and brighten them either with ISO or in post with exposure sliders, the randomness caused by the poor light signal captured is exacerbated into a noise pattern. So just to recap, ISO does not directly control exposure. ISO is, simply put, an amplification setting applied to light, effectively the same as turning up the volume on your radio or adjusting the gain on a microphone. It doesn't actually change what signal is being received, it just amplifies it. A radio station with poor signal can't be turned up too far because it just turns to static, which is annoying, just like you can't crank the ISO too far if you're working in low light because noise and grain appears. Same goes for a microphone. If you're trying to record something with lots of background noise and want to increase the gain of the microphone, not only does the voice get amplified, but the background noise does as well. Since ISO isn't part of the exposure triangle, what does this mean? Should we just remove that side altogether to get an exposure line? Should we replace ISO with scene luminance? I mean, then the triangle would surely be an exposure triangle. No strings attached, no corners cut. Should we call it the brightness triangle? ISO affects the brightness of the image and so do aperture, shutter speed, and scene luminance. When you change exposure, you also change image brightness, remember? Surely that's the best option, right? Well, the answer is there is no answer. To be completely honest, the whole idea of an exposure triangle is flawed if you want to consider every possible technical detail about photography, light, and how cameras work. The issue is that using a triangle is just too simple of a graphic to tie everything together. But if you apply a few caveats to the exposure triangle, explain it correctly, and add a few extra labels and written instructions, it is possible to get it to work make sense, and be useful. So the first major change I'm going to make to the exposure triangle is renaming it to the camera settings triangle. This allows me to weave in the concepts of brightness and exposure into the triangle instead of trying to edit a triangle that's flawed from the beginning. So it just makes sense to call it the camera settings triangle since that's ultimately the aim with the graphic to more easily make sense of our camera settings and how we should use them. So on our new camera settings triangle, we will keep shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. On the shutter speed side, we can safely say that as we lengthen the shutter speed, we increase exposure. Also, we can say that as we lengthen shutter speed, motion blur increases. For aperture, it is a fact that wider apertures let in more light and thus lead to a higher exposure. Also, wider apertures decrease depth of field, which is useful if you want to separate your subject from the background. Now, we can tackle ISO. Since we know ISO does not directly affect exposure, we will not use that terminology now, but instead we will say that increasing ISO increases brightness. All of this is technically correct. But notice how I have purposely been saying that ISO does not directly affect exposure. Well, 
This is because if you change aperture and or shutter speed while changing ISO to keep the same brightness, then the exposure also changes. Take the two camera setting configurations of 1 100th of a second f5.6 in ISO 400 versus 1 200th of a second f5.6 in ISO 800. A naive conclusion would be that both these images would have the same exposure, just because they look like they have the same brightness. But just because of this, we can conclude that they have equivalent exposures. In this example, if we examine the two images up close, it is clear that the picture taken with the faster shutter speed of 1 200th of a second is grainier. This is because the exposure time was cut in half when we increased the ISO, which ended up cutting the available light to the camera in half, thus degrading the image quality. With this knowledge, we can start fixing the exposure triangle by adding some instructions to it, like a manual or a guide. While there are many ways to approach this, I think that the best is to use a step-by-step -step method to choosing camera settings. The first step is to set the shutter speed. The shutter speed will depend on what you are photographing, but remember that shutter speed will affect how much motion blur you include in your shot. Next, set the aperture. The aperture you choose will depend on how much depth of field you want. Another thing to remember is that most lenses are sharpest around f4 to f8, and undesirable qualities like vignetting and chromatic aberrations become less visible as you stop down. These two settings will form your camera exposure along with the scene you are photographing. To maximize your light gathering abilities and thus image quality, choose the slowest shutter speed and widest aperture you can, given your scenario. The third and final step will be to adjust ISO to form an image that looks adequately bright. As for the fact that ISO can change exposure based on how it interacts with the other two camera settings, I just added some text that explains this under the ISO side along with some diagrams. So now, together, we have created an accurate camera settings triangle that explains exposure image brightness, and how aperture, shutter speed, and ISO come together to create photos. And for beginners, graphics like these can really help make learning photography easier. Now if all this is confusing or too pedantic, then I really don't blame you. In photography instruction, there is always this challenge of teaching a subject without confusing the audience. And because photography is rooted in science, but ultimately produces art, with these kind of videos, you can often lose sight of the forest for the trees, so to speak, meaning that you get lost in the details of the concept without realizing the reality of the matter. At the end of the day, you will probably produce great images regardless if you adopt this new camera settings triangle or not, but I also believe in accurate and honest education from the start. And the exposure triangle is just one of the many photographic concepts that have become misconstrued and improperly taught as we have transitioned from film photography to digital. Please let me know if this video helped you understand exposure and why the exposure triangle we have all been taught really is not correct. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to watch my others and subscribe with notifications if you want to learn photography. I also have a Patreon where you can help me create more photography videos since I am a one-man operation and I have no sponsorships nor any affiliate links. I create photography videos that are straightforward and no-nonsense to help you guys get better at taking photos and using your camera. As always, Stay tuned for more content and thank you for watching.